Hey everybody, it is Russell Gamer, Double Bully Bodrum, and I know it's been a little while since I've done review videos here on the WGS YouTube channel, but what better way to pick what a better way to pick that up than with Impact Wrestling tonight? Um, a lot of big things happened. We opened up with Immortal and and Sting as they get set for the main event match of Ken Anderson and Sting with the TNA World Heavyweight Title, or Quite possibly a name change for that. I will address that when I come to it in the show. Then we had uh, the three people with um, with no scores on the Battle for Glory series. Bobby Roode, Samoa Joe, and the Pope. Um, very interesting match here. It really didn't hold my attention too much for some reason. You know, Normally I'm a fan of Bobby Roode, but mostly when he's tagging with uh, James Storm's Beer Money, one of the best tag teams in, in uh, Impact Wrestling. Uh, Samoa Joe, Samoan Eating Machine, the Pope didn't, you know, well, think about this. We, for the longest time in, in TNA, we had Samoa Joe and the Pope, Samoa Joe and the Pope, and then they put him again, we see him again, Samoa Joe and the Pope. Was I interested? No, was not. So, I, you know, I was, you know, I wasn't expecting too much out of this match, even though we did have uh, Bobby Roode involved into it. But uh, Bobby Roode ends up uh, becoming the winner. And then we have the segment in where Immortal is in their office. They're all discussing what to do about Sting. And then we have Jeff Jarrett return. And as expected, he had the Mexican heavyweight title. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it might be from the AAA organization. I am not entirely sure. Not entirely sure. Anyway, but... um. Then we, um, after that segment, we had the Pope and Devon's kids. You know, I really like to know where they're going with the Pope and Devon. You know, is it going to be like, you know, what Raven and Tommy Dreamer of ECW? Or are they going to try to go that route with them? I'm not entirely sure exactly where the storyline is going. It's interesting because you have Devon's kids who are enamored with the Pope. Devon couldn't give a rat's ass what happens to the Pope so uh, it, you know it, it, when I say Raven and Tommy Dreamer it's exactly the, the same kind of volatile I don't know partnership we can call it when it comes to Devon and the Pope I mean look what happened on in last week in the Bound for Glory tag match you know, Pope had the opportunity to get the win and get the points for himself in the Bound for Glory series. Instead, he tags in Devon and lets Devon get the pin and get the points. So, I know Pope's trying to set something up. I don't know. You know, it, it would really help to have more, maybe more intel, more detail into this storyline. I would really love to see where they would go with this, because... You know, for once, I'm actually intrigued with something that Devon and the Pope are doing in wrestling today. And, you know, they really haven't been doing much. You know, ever since Team 3D split up, I mean, what have, what has Devon done, zilch? What has the Pope done, you know, except have a long, a long, and I mean long, feud with Samoa Joe? Nothing. I think the only person, the only gimmick storyline angle that's been longer than the feud with Samoa Joe and the Pope, it's got to be Kurt Angle and Jeff Jarrett. It's got to be Kurt Angle and Jeff Jarrett. But anyway, as I bring back my notes up, we had Austin Aries and Shannon Moore. Now, initially, I thought Shannon Moore was going to be the heel because he had been doing some heelish things as of late on Impact Wrestling. But uh, it turns out it's Austin Aries. Aries, you know, real nice talent pickup for Impact Wrestling. But I said it last night on WGS Radio. I really do think that Low Key is the person that should have been the one to win the contract. He deserved it after WWE just shafted the crap out of him. I mean, they just totally underutilized Caval, or he's now known as Low Key. I really think that he deserved to have the contract and the chance again in TNA. But on on the flip side, you know, Austin Aries again is a nice pickup. Um, I know he's done a lot of work in Ring of Honor. Um, you know, he's had previous gimmicks in TNA before as the Austin Star, uh, which really flopped. But 
let's be honest. I mean, he didn't go anywhere as the Austin star. Nowhere. I mean, nowhere fast. Kevin Nash brought him in as the Austin star. Did he go anywhere? No. So, I'm hoping this time around with Austin Aries, you know, again, he is a good talent, but he needs just to have the right kind of push. And in this match with Shannon Moore, you know, involved the book of Denley Gaft and a chain behind the referee's back to the forehead of Shannon Moore. And then Alex Shelley comes in after the match was over to question Austin Aries about the chain. Again, uh, another thing I would like to see pan out on, uh, you know, how they're going to go with this. You know, really interested to see. They went, and then, of course, you know, at the introduction of, uh, you know, at the start of the show, we had Sting... You know, introducing the the Sting clowns as part of his Joker gimmick, and you know a lot of people are wondering who it was, who it was. You know, I already had a good idea who it was, and it did turn out to be who it was. Who it was, you'll find out at the towards the end of my review. Um, we had Abyss who was apparently pissed, you know, a little depressed and possibly pissed off over the fact that Brian Kendrick beat him. I, I don't, I really didn't pay attention too much to what he's saying because again, you need like a you know, just like with Brian Kendrick, you need a philosophical dictionary just to translate whatever the hell he's saying. You know, song zoo this, song zoo that. I suck song zoo's dick. Anyway, uh, next thing we know, uh, one of the sting clowns comes up and knocks Abyss out with the bat. And then we, uh, then Scott Steiner, Scott Steiner was the, the next victim. And then we had the match with Tara and Madison Rain. Everybody was wondering what Tara had in the bo- in a box. She had a, a gift box. You know what? If for people out there who pay attention wrestling gimmicks like I do, I already knew what it was, and it turned out to be exactly what it was. It was Tara's spider poison. How many people remember the, sp- the Tara's spider poison? I'm not sure many people do, but I did. I did. It was part of her gimmick before she went out for the short time in in TNA, and then Madison Rain brought her back. It was this. It was her spider poison, and uh, Tara did get the win, and Madison Rain literally had the shit scared out of her. Then we had Kurt Angle talking a, um, a segment, especially involving last week, involving Ken Anderson, said something along the lines that Anderson, no matter whether you win or lose, I'm coming after you tonight after what you did, and you know. He also made mention of people telling Kurt Angle that the empty arena match that he and Sting had was one of the best matches they've ever seen, which I call shenanigans on because I've seen a lot better matches. Now, it was a good match, the empty arena match with Kurt Angle and Sting, but I've seen better. I've seen a lot better than that. Triple H Undertaker, WrestleMania 25, HBK Shawn Michaels. I can go on, people. I can go on. You know, because those were great matches. I'm, you know, Kurt Angle and Sting at the Empty Arena match was a great match, but I'm not going to hold that to the same candle as Triple H and Undertaker and Shawn Michaels as un- and un- Undertaker from WrestleMania 25. Wouldn't even come close. Wouldn't even come close. Now, again, Sting and Kurt Angle, they are two talented very, very talented wrestlers who I will believe in a few years we will see in the Wrestling Hall of Fame, whether it's WWE or Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame or PWI Hall of Fame. In a short few years, we will see one of those names in a Hall of Fame, whether it's WWE, PWI, or what, whatever. But, again, the, the quality of the match... When it when you compare it to Shawn Michaels and Undertaker WrestleMania 25 doesn't even come close, doesn't even come close. But then again, people, this is just my opinion. You may have a different opinion about it. Um, then we had a Sting clown going after Jeff Jarrett as Jeff Jarrett was trying to say Arriba, uh, and um, let's just say Karen Jarrett ran as fast as her plastic tits can carry her. Um, Mexican America, British Invasion. Is the tag team division just <sighs> everywhere? That's all I'm gonna say. Um, one thing to note about this match: for some reason, um, around this part of 
William's head. It was all red and it was bleeding. I don't know if that was from a botch. Um, I really didn't uh, see where it happened in the match. It would have to happen at a in a botch because you know his head was badly marked and he was bleeding. So hard to say what it was. I really didn't catch it. But if you guys caught it, leave it in the comment below because I really like to know what exactly happened that caused the bleeding of Douglas Williams' forehead and the huge mark that was on it during the match. So if you guys caught that, please let me know. I really would love to know. And then, of course, we had the reveal of Sting's clowns who uh, then in turn beat the crap out of Gunner. Who were Sting's clowns? There were four clowns. Gee, who's the people, you know, what's the gimmick in TNA that's using four? Oh, yeah. Fortune. Fortune. I think that's how the gimmick goes. Yeah, Fortune. You know, the Fortune 4. Which was, a, um, you know, it was Storm. It was James Storm. It was Christopher Daniels. It was Kazarian and AJ Styles. But yet there was another clown to make an appearance. And I'll tell you this. Um, it happened in the Sting-Mr. Anderson match. Interesting match. Um, a lot better than Sting-Jeff Hardy at Victory Road. I will say that. At least it didn't go a minute and 88 seconds long or something like that. But, um... Yes, it was a crack on Jeff Hardy, by the way, for those of you who are watching. Anyway, um... Sting ends up getting the win and becoming the new... World, world Heavyweight Champion. And, of course, the you know, Bully Ray got involved, and then the st Lights go on, then we had the fifth clown, then after the match was over, the fifth clown was revealed to be Kurt Angle. Now, be, uh, before I finish off this review, uh, I want to point out something Kurt Angle said in this segment earlier tonight. When he said he was going to become the champion, he did not say TNA World Heavyweight Champion. He did not say it. He said Impact Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion. Is this the sign that the name TNA, Total Nonstop Action, is done? You know, could we be seeing a new title belt in the future that, that wipes off the TNA on the belt and replaces it with Impact Wrestling? It, I think it's quite possible. It's quite possible. I mean, they're going through, you know... It, you know, name changes. They don't even refer to the television title as the TNA television title. They call it the the television title. You know, world tag titles, not the TNA tag titles. The world tag team titles. And now Kurt Angle, in his segment tonight on Impact Wrestling, he calls it the Impact Wrestling World Heavyweight Title. I think Kurt Angle just pretty much gave it away. That you know, they're they're doing away. With the TNA name. They're doing away with it. So. Match of the night time. What was my favorite match of the night? I'll tell you this right now. You know. In a two hour program. We had one. Two. Three. Four. Five matches. On a two hour program. And the first two matches. Happened in the first hour. That was it. Highly disappointed in that format. You know, Impact Wrestling, you promo the fact that wrestling matters, but you only have five matches in a two-hour slot. Something not right about that. Something terribly not right about that. But anyway, um, let's see, the five matches we have, I have to pick from for Match of the Night. It's not going to be Sting and Anderson. Even though it was the most exciting to other people out there, I really didn't hold much interest in it. Um... See, would it be Terra and Madison Rain? I don't know. Um, you know what? I, I might not have a pick in here because the five matches they had tonight, I was not enamored with. Um, but see, so, so you know what? You know, just by default, I got to go with the main event, Sting and Mr. Anderson. Uh, Mexican America and British Invasion was an interesting match, uh, but. Uh, you know, I thought Tara and Madison Rain was better, to be honest with you. Not just the fact that they were knockouts, but I think match quality, I think they were better. But, um, I don't think they were, I don't think they would hold a candle to Sting and Mr. Anderson, to be honest with y'all. Um, Austin Aries and Shannon Moore, seriously. And, again, Bobby Roode, Samoa Joe and the Pope, again, I say, seriously. 
So I want to know what you guys' thoughts on Impact Wrestling was. Leave your comments in the comment section below. And before we go, I'd like to remind everybody, July 20th on WGS Radio, former WCW star Buff Bagwell will be our guest. Tune in to blogtalkradio.com slash WGS Radio Wednesday, July 20th, 7 p.m. Central Time. I will post the link in the chat room, in the description box below. So, with that being said, I'm Double B Bully Boudreaux, a.k.a. Wrestle Gamer. Thank you very much for watching.